Hey, it's Taylor Payman, and welcome to The Tribe Life, your weekly resource to help you become the best version of you. For today's episode, I'm going to tackle some yoga FAQs that some of my brave insiders have emailed in. So, let's start with the first question. Hi Taylor, this may sound like a dumb question. I see yoga everywhere and have even taken a class, but I still don't know what exactly it is. Is it considered a form of exercise? Uh, so first of all, there is no such thing as a dumb question. I created this community to help anyone interested in yoga, especially those that are brand new, to feel comfortable, confident, and empowered both on and off your mat. So if you feel like you have a dumb question, please ask it anyways. I guarantee someone else has the exact same question as you. Also, I love this question because I know when I first started practicing yoga, I had the exact same question. Is it stretching? Is it like Pilates or gymnastics? I totally get it. So don't feel silly if you've ever had or still have this question. So yoga comes from the Sanskrit word uj, spelt Y-U-J, which means to bind. It's usually interpreted to mean union um, or a method of discipline. And fun fact, yoga is estimated to be over 2,000 years old. What? Yoga is also much more than the handstands you see all over social media. Think of yoga as a tree, okay? So start with the trunk. There are actually eight different parts, or limbs, as they're referred to in the yoga community. And only one of those limbs is the physical practice that we're all familiar with, which is called asana. Asanas are the poses you learn for the physical practice in yoga. Make sense? The other limbs I'll explain in another video, but as a quick overview, they include meditation, concentration, um, and breathing exercises, just to name a few. So moving on to the next question. Hi Taylor, I love your episode on starting before you're ready. Thank you. What is the difference between a yogi and a yogini? Is it just male and female? Great question. So yes, by definition, a yogi is a male who practices yoga um, and a female who practices is a yogini. That being said, you will hear many female practitioners calling themselves a yogi, myself included, and it's not really frowned upon if you do. I don't think I've ever heard a male call themselves a yogini though, but either way, now you know the background and appropriate terms. Okay, so next question. Hi Taylor, I was wondering, what does namaste mean? So namaste is one of the most common words you'll hear from any yoga teacher. If you break the word down, nama means bow, as means I, and te means you. Therefore, all together, namaste basically means I bow to you. And what does that mean? If you tell someone namaste, you're saying my soul honors your soul. I honor the light, the love, the truth, the beauty, and the peace that is within you, because it's also within me. In sharing these things, we are united, we are the same, we are one. Kinda cute, huh? All right, so the next question. Hi, Taylor, I go to a yoga class where the teacher always tells us to set an intention. What does that mean? This is a great question. I'm a big fan of asking my students to set their intention at the beginning of every yoga class. This basically means set your goal for the class. What are you looking to get out of it? So your intention for class could be to let go or relax into the poses or focus on challenging yourself and trying a pose you might normally skip. You could also set your intention by dedicating your practice to a person. So just something else to think about. Setting an intention gets your mind in the habit of doing things with purpose and intention both on and off the mat as well. Okay, last question for today. Hi Taylor, what is your favorite brand of yoga mats and what would you recommend to someone just starting out? Personally, I love jade mats. They are a bit thicker, so my knees don't hurt when I'm on the ground. Um, also, they're super grippy, so my hands don't slip easily, um, as easily as they would on other types of mats. So if your hands get pretty sweaty or you just find that you're slipping around a lot, it's kind of hard to, especially in down dog, um, get some good grounding in your hands and your feet. Jade mats are awesome for that. 
Um, but when I started out, I literally, I went to Target and I bought the cheapest mat that I could find. Actually, I still have it, <laughs> sentimental reasons. If you're just starting out and, and don't want to spend a lot of money though, I would just do that. Just go to Target and get a mat for like $15, $20. But also keep in mind that you don't have to have a mat to practice yoga, right? You can practice on the floor with a towel or a blanket even, but it's nice to have some slight cushion between you and the ground. I hope this helped answer some of your questions. If you have any other burning yoga questions that I didn't answer today, you can leave your question down below this video or stop on over to taylorpengman.com and leave a comment. Did you like this video? If so, subscribe to my channel and I would be so grateful if you shared this with your friends. And if you want even more great yoga resources or tips to help you become the best version of you, plus some personal insights that I only talk about in email, come on over to taylorpengman.com and sign up for email updates. The light in me honors the light in you. Keep following your dreams. I believe in you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time on The Tribe Life. Namaste.